Hello, everybody. Uh, this is DFS Chan uh, coming to you here to talk about this year's uh, March Madness tournament, um, men's college basketball tournament that we have um, starting this Thursday. Again, as uh, we did last year, we have here Tony, uh, the bracketologist. Um, I'll let him introduce himself and I'll let him how many he actually got uh, right in predicting all the teams um, for the tournament. But we are very glad to have him here. He, you know, is an avid follower and um, he writes articles about college basketball throughout the year and everything. So welcome, Tony. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Johnny. Thanks for having me. As always, it's a pleasure to be on the channel, to be on the show. Uh, just like last year, we'll go through the picks. Well, we'll see what happens. Hope to do a little better. I know last year, a lot of the uh, you know, <laughs> Arizona, a lot of my picks flamed out. Kentucky famously yeah. lost in the first round of the Peacocks. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. But yeah, uh, I'm Tony uh, at Twitter at TBasil. I run a bracketology model um, and do some some writing on the side, largely focusing on our alma mater, the Michigan Wolverines team. But I also take a kind of a zoomed out look at the Big Ten and the rest of the, the college basketball landscape. Um, it was a good year for me this year, bracketology wise. I got 67 out of the 68 teams. Wow. I missed out on Rutgers. I thought Rutgers um, was going to make it. Instead, Pitt made it. But, uh, you know, you can't win them all, but I'll take it. 67 out of 68. So if, if we do this well uh, in picking the bracket, I think we'll be in good shape. So. Yeah, and I hear people always complain about how many Big Ten teams make it to the tournament. And <clears throat> I actually thought Rutgers would make it as well, but maybe it's the reverse bias that people thought Big Ten was overrated this year with Michigan falling out and yeah. a lot of teams struggling. I think the parity was not you know, not there really for Big Ten teams um this year. So anyway, Michigan's in NIT, our alma mater. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, we, we won today. We beat Toledo. Yeah. So we're in the second round yeah, of the NIT. We're, we're not even the number one seed in the <laughs> NIT. So that's pretty sad. Anyway, on a brighter note, um, I'm going to share my screen. I'll put up a bracket uh, for this year. Let's do that real quick. Uh... All right, so yeah, this is Tony's uh, Twitter, so feel free to follow. And there I am. yeah, so. yeah, feel free. Uh, all right, so here is the bracket. Um, but first, before we dive into each region and each matchups, um, we're gonna kind of just go through general, um, maybe pointers or tips, um, and stats, maybe that will help you to fill out a bracket more effectively. For example, um, please, please do not pick all four number one seats to make it to the tournament uh, semifinals, final, final four. Um, like I know a lot of the people in my work bracket group <laughs> and my family bracket group, they tend to do that. I mean, I see so many people do that. I think just like, at the yeah. end of the day, they're like, oh, they're the number one seats for a reason. But upsets happen all the time. And we'll talk about some of those, a lot of those upsets, maybe upset potentials. But, you know, I just feel like, you know, that it happens very rarely. I don't know what you think, Tony, but number one seeds mm -hmm. make all making to the final four. Yeah, super rare. I think it's only happened once ever um, about 15 years ago. But yeah, really, I mean, you know, people, yeah, they see the one or the two next to the name. And they think, okay, you know, they're, they're a cakewalk all the way through. But really... I think statistically, once you get past the first round, I mean, a one seed is going to beat a 16 seed pretty much every time. But even against an eight or a nine seed in the second round, those games become coin flips pretty fast. So, you know, I, usually one or two one seeds make it all the way to the final four, but all four of them, yeah, I would I would spice it up a little bit more than that. Right. And then my general point of number two is, um, you know, there there will be upsets. Uh, there will be an upset um, between a 12 over five, in my opinion, at least statistically, um, it said since the expansion of the tournament, the number 12 seed wins about 35% of the time versus the number five seed. So statistically, at least one number two, 12 seed should win here in this year's tournament. Um, and we'll talk about which of those 12 seeds is Tony's favorite. <laughs> yeah. um, there there are some the good ones this year. There, exactly. There's some good 12 seeds. Yeah. Exactly. And I think um, there are some higher seeds, seed teams that – uh, may not be as strong um, as the maybe you know the those seeds from last year or the year before that. I think this year is you know 
very op- wide open, in my opinion. I think there are a few elite teams, in my opinion, but I think aside from those, I think anything really can happen. Um, and I like a lot of the spots for potential upsets. And my last general pointer is um, I want, I think we should pick at least one seed lower than a number 10 seed to make it to the Sweet 16. Um, I, that's happened, let's see, in 2022, four double digit seeds made it to the Sweet 16. And I think um, St. Peter's was the lowest one. And they actually made it to quite, they have actually made it quite far to Elite Eight. And I think Miami made it to the Elite Eight as the number 10 seed. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, so as you can tell, there will be upsets. Um, It's it's our, you know, our our spots, you know, uh, that we need to pick the right spots, basically. Um, So I'm very interested in hearing about Tony's, uh, you know, tips and matchup analyses and, you know, see if any of the key players, star players, you know, can can take them over the hump. But do you have any other general pointers or tips for filling out a bracket, Tony? Yeah, I think it's interesting when when you're talking about winning a bracket pool. Um, you know, a lot of times, you know, say you got forty or fifty people in a pool, you're going to get a lot of folks picking the one seeds, Alabama, Houston. Um, you know, of the top, they've been great all year. It wouldn't surprise me if they won the whole thing. But you kind of you're putting all your eggs in that basket if you if you pick one of those teams. A good strategy, in my opinion, which I, you know, sometimes works, sometimes doesn't, but pick one of those teams that's just a tier lower or maybe a little bit less popular. Um, and I think ESPN has a feature where can, you can kind of take a look at the trends and see, you know, who's picking who on kind of a macro level. Um, mm. So, yeah, just just a thought. And then also with, with upsets is I kind of like to pick upsets that won't hurt me too badly if they don't make it through. So let's say that you love Alabama. You have them going all the way through. Um you can go ahead and pick a Furman, you know, or pick a Charleston because, you know, ultimately um, if you think Alabama is going to win anyway, a couple of rounds later, you're not losing that many points. Um, if you, if you don't get those upsets, right. And if you miss out on a Virginia making a couple, a couple wins. So, you know, things like that um, can kind of optimize your chances around the margins. But, you know, like I said, it's, it's a crapshoot. You never know what's going to happen. Um, you know, there are a lot of ways to do it, but. Yeah, and that's a good point. And I think part of what you said relates to the game theory. I think it depends on the size of the pool, bracket pool you're playing in as well. Obviously, if you're playing in like the ESPN main tournament with like millions of other people, then obviously you will need to get those upsets correctly, right? Mm -hmm. You need to take more risks. And you'll need to think about from the ownership standpoint, if you think Alabama is virtually going to be 99% picked, you know, to win <laughs> the first yeah. game. Yeah. I mean, that that's definitely going to happen. And it's, it's a, it's a wise game theory move to fade that and then go with somebody else. Mm-hmm. So I think if, but if you are playing in a work bracket pool with like 20 other people in your office, then you don't need to take as much risks, right? Like you, you that's do true. need to kind of just go chalky, and pick the pick the higher seed teams that you think will have a higher chance of winning. Like if they if you think they'll win eight, eight out of ten times, then they'll be, probably be the be the right pick to choose. Um, if you are playing in a smaller size pool, so so that's just a you know game theory thing. But I think you know overall, just gotta go with your gut, and sometimes gotta go with the better mascot. You know, if you ask my wife, so um, <laughs> it is what it is. So yeah. So without any further ado, let's go into each matchups and each regions. I'm actually going to, most people start in the South region because that's the first that shows up, but I'm actually going to go to the Midwest region. I'm going to throw you a little curveball, Tony. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. (laughs) In in my opinion, Midwest is the most wide open and probably Mm -hmm. a lot of upsets that I see in this this region, Um, but... So I'm guessing you like Houston over Northern Kentucky in the first matchup. Yeah, let's, let's go ahead and put uh, put the Cougars through. Do you let's talk, let's talk about the Big Ten Iowa team, um, mm-hmm. who is coached by uh, Mr. McCaffrey that I hate <laughs> quite a bit. Um, but yeah. you know he has his uh, kids playing for him on that team, and maybe there's an extra motivation and. You know, uh, maybe family motivation there, but, you know, going up against a tough Auburn team, in my opinion. So what do you got in that matchup? Yeah, this is an interesting one. Um, yeah, we as, as Michigan fans, we we face the McCaffreys uh, in this Iowa Hawkeyes team multiple times per season, most of most of the years. Um, 
I don't know. I, I think Iowa, I mean, they have an elite, elite offense. Um, they have, uh, they have another Murray, um, you know, uh, Chris and Keegan Murray, the brothers uh, have been going through the program. One of them's out in Sacramento, you know, doing a great job in the NBA. The other is going to be drafted again after this season. Um, offensively, they are elite. Defensively, they are a paper tiger. They're, they're, they have a horrible defense. Um, routinely, games with Iowa will be in the 90s, even 100s, you know, in, in some cases. Um, so I think for me, you know, it'd be a fun game to watch. Uh, but the Iowa offense versus a very, very good Auburn defense um, is kind of going to be what, what, what it comes down to. I think right. Auburn just a little bit more balanced. Um, so I would probably say they'll advance. Iowa could if they shoot the lights out, you know, but but Auburn for me, I think, has the edge there. Oh, okay. Um, I I like the fact that Auburn's also playing in Alabama. Um, yeah. So I think that's going to be an interesting home crowd advantage there. Mm-hmm. Uh, at least more, you know, closer proximity to Auburn uh, compared to Iowa. So I will agree with you and I'll put Auburn through. Um, and then here's here we go. Here's the twelve five matchup yeah. between Drake and Miami. Uh, I think this is a very interesting one. Um, I like Miami quite a bit, but I've seen a lot of other experts pick Drake. Um, just given that Drake has a pretty pretty good offense, at least from what I've saw what I've seen. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's. Um, I think I read somewhere. Yeah, I think I read somewhere they're very experienced and they have a lot of um, uh, veterans on the team. So. They've been playing together quite a bit. So what do you think about this matchup? Yeah, I think, you know, it's interesting that you, you bring up the experience perspective here. Um, it's something that we're seeing a lot more kind of this year, last year. We'll probably also see it again next year because of the COVID year. A lot of, a lot of players get five or even six years where they can stay in college, be eligible to play on the team. And, you know, you have a lot of these mid-majors, like, like your Drakes, for instance, that, yeah, very old, very experienced, um, kind of gives them a bit of a leg up, kind of evens the playing field. When normally you'd think of, you know, a high major program like Miami would just wipe the mm-hmm. floor with them. Um, this is very close. I, I think, you know, Miami, they have some nice wins this year, but analytically they're they're kind of an average, maybe probably yeah. below average five seed. Um, so, yeah, I, I think Drake has has the potential here and I think they're probably going to do it. Another thing, Miami suffered an injury, I think, in the ACC tournament against Duke. Um, his name is Norchad Omir, kind of a glue guy, kind of a do it all um, player for Miami he's you know maybe kind of up in the air so that's another reason where drake i think could have him gotcha all right already we have a 12 over 5 upset here (laughs) i love it actually auburn was number nine as well so there's a little bit of upset there um here we go indiana is an interesting one um with trace uh trace jackson davis um one of my favorite players to watch i think he will do well in the nba um going up against kent state i I'm a believer in Indiana's team. Um, I know he had some injury issues throughout the season, but, you know, just watching them later in the Big Ten uh, conference, I like them quite a bit the way they play. But I do think they have some deficiencies on offense uh, aside from Trace Jackson Davis. Um, So what do you think about this matchup against Kent State? Yeah, this is, I mean, this is another one. You know, this this is one in my bracket. I kind of like Kent State a little bit more than Indiana here. Um, Kent State, it's an interesting team. You know, the champions out of the MAC, um, pretty decent mid-major league. But if you look back at the early part of the season for Kent State, they went toe-to-toe with three tournament teams. College of Charleston, all, all these on the road, by the way. Um, you know, they barely lost to Charleston, barely lost to Houston, barely lost to Gonzaga. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, they, they hung with them. And they were leading in all, those, all three of those games with under three minutes to go. Um, just couldn't quite close the deal. But they're not going to be intimidated by Indiana. Um, you know, I think, I think Kent State, they're a good team. Um, they're experienced. They're small, though, is the thing. They're, I think, on average, three inches across the board smaller than the players that are going to be guarding for Indiana. Trace Jackson Davis is a matchup nightmare for them. They're not going to be able to stop them. I think the question is, can they slow down the rest of the team, force Jackson Davis to do everything? Um, so this one, I could go either way. It's going to be very close, I think. But it just depends on uh, how much you believe in the supporting cast of Trace Jackson Davis. Well, I I will gladly be the tiebreaker there, um, and yeah. I will go with Indiana. Um, I do think Trace and Trace Jackson Davis will have a matchup matchup problem, create a mm-hmm. matchup problem against Kent State, and in a close game like that, I I think having a closer like that and you know in Indiana yeah. I think will help um 
especially against the undersized Kent State, like you mentioned. So, all right. And then the next one is Iowa State against the winner of the Mississippi State uh, Pittsburgh game. That's going to happen maybe tomorrow, maybe in the next couple of days. Um, so, what do you got in that 11 versus six matchup? Yeah, this is another interesting one. 11 6, we've seen a lot of upsets, um, you know, in the past where the 11 seed wins in the first four and then goes on to make a bit of a run. We saw that with yeah. UCLA. We'll see. I think if it's Pitt, I would say Iowa State easily gets through. I don't think Pitt's that good. Um, Michigan played them and beat them by 30, and we didn't even make the tournament. You know? So I, I think Pitt's overrated. Um, Iowa State's a great defensive team. If it's Mississippi State, you know, that's going to be close. Um, so we'll see. Kind of may, may, maybe wait until Wednesday or Thursday to make your final pick there. Um, but, you know, on the balance of things, Iowa State, they beat Baylor three times. Um, they tend to do pretty well in the tournament. They did did really well last year as a as I think a double digit seed so I'd probably pick them but well we'll see okay so it depends on if miss I think Mississippi State will that will, will win that game as well so I think it's going to be a tough matchup against Iowa State um but I I will put Iowa State through here just for the sake of um for the bracket um and then yeah we have Xavier as the number three seed here with a huge yeah. injury issue that Tony will talk about and then we have Texas A&M and Texas that the rest of the uh, region that we'll talk about. This is a very interesting bottom half of the region. I think any of these three teams, yeah. in my opinion, could advance to, you know, the elite eight. Um, but, you know, I want to hear about what you think about Xavier with that injury issue and the rest of the Texas uh, colleges that we just talked about. Yeah. I mean, I, I like Xavier. They're, they're a three seed. I think I had them as a four, but you know, they're, they're definitely deserving of a three seed. Um, Another example of a team that last year they barely missed out on the tournament. They won the NIT, you know, and, and this year that it's kind of catapulted them, giving them a lot of momentum going into the season. They also have a new coach, Sean Miller, who used to coach Arizona. Um, so he's kind of brought in a slightly different system, different approach. They play pretty fast. Um, so they're a good team. They had a great season. The problem, like you mentioned, Shawnee, Zach Fremantle, kind of the 6'9", senior, do-it-all guy um, for the Xavier Musketeers. You know, he, he went down, um, I think when was his last game, kind of probably late January, early February, they were rolling in their season. They've, they've, they've sustained their success, but they've been doing it kind of different ways, kind of more guard play. Um, but I don't know. I, I think Xavier, the ceiling of this team is a lot lower than it was. If you asked me back a few months ago, I think this is a team that could make a deep run. I think they probably get through, get through Kennesaw state, um, but yeah, after that point, you know, who knows? Um, it's just they're, they've had to kind of reinvent themselves. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it's it's a little dicey. Gotcha. But you still have Xavier going through beating Kansas State? In this case, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think they have enough talent across the board. They can get through this one, but that's the only guarantee I've got for you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think Xavier is in a tough spot. I think, you know, with that injury, um, I think this could be a – maybe a popular spot, you know, for people to pick Kennesaw State, just just reading reading that headline that their star uh, Fremantle is injured and he's out for the tournament and then go Kennesaw State. But I don't know. I, I, don't, I just feel like not so fast, right? Like I said, I just feel like Xavier's offense is still pretty good without him. And I think they have enough firepower to be able to beat Kennesaw State. But but I want to want I want to talk about Texas A and M and Texas. I think Ooh. this is going to be a very interesting one. But first, Texas A and M will have to beat Penn State to be able to play play Texas in the next round, mm -hmm. and I think they will. But what do you think? Yeah, this one's really close. This one I think is a really interesting matchup. Um, it's two teams that started kind of slow this season, but they're peaking at the right time. They both made made runs to the final game of the conference championship tournaments. Um, and, you know, they've, I think, I think Texas a is a little underseeded. I think they could have mm -hmm. easily been a, a five or even a six, somewhere in there. Seven seems a little low. Um, also Penn State, I mean, by the end of the season, they were playing like probably a, a six seed. Um, but, you know, it just, they didn't really do much in the beginning of the year to justify that. So I think a 10 is about right for them. Um, but yeah, I, I think, you know, the style of this matchup too is really interesting. Um, Texas a lets you shoot threes. Texas a they, they sit back, they protect the paint. They say, go ahead and beat us with, with these long, you know, 25, 30 footers. Penn State loves to shoot threes. That's all they do. They take more threes than anybody in the country. So it's mm -hmm. kind of this, like, they're both kind of playing into each other's hands in an interesting way, stylistically. Um, so we'll see. I mean, it's, it's kind of the ultimate gamble. 
Um, if Penn State makes threes, they're unbeatable. You know, they'll, they'll blow, they'll blow you out, they'll blow out Purdue. Um, you know, at home, even if, if if they can do that. But if they don't, they're a very average team. Um, ultimately, I I think you go either way. Texas A&M is probably more balanced. They've had a better year overall, so that's probably where I would lean. But it's it's very close. This this actually you talking about that brings back very good memories of Michigan blowing out Texas A&M in one of the tournaments that That's we right. um, made a very far run in that uh, March, March Madness tournament. Um, I think that game was over by halftime. Yeah. And I think we did beat them by a lot of threes, even though mm-hmm. obviously that was a complete, completely different roster for Texas A&M back then. But still, I think system, systematically, schematically, I think Texas A&M likes to play that style um, more on the rebound side. So yeah, I think that's an interesting one. So do you who do you who do you have winning? You think AM? Yeah, I think AM in a close one. Um ultimately, yeah, I just think that they are a little bit too much. They've got a Michigan State transfer playing center for him, Julius Marble. So mm-hmm. he's uh he's seen he's seen Penn State. He kind of knows what they're all about. So I think they squeak through, but it's close. Gotcha. Who you got in the Texas versus Colgate matchup? Oh, that one. <laughs> it depends if I'm brushing my teeth or not. But no, yeah, yeah. I like I like Texas to uh, <laughs> gotcha. to get through. Gotcha. Yeah. Speaking of Texas, so this is a you know, in rivalry, in state rivalry matchup here, um, AM versus Texas. Um, it's not a football game; it's a basketball game. So there are, it's a different story. Um, yeah. I do think AM is underseeded, and I do think this is a better matchup for AM, um, mm-hmm. compared to Penn State, like you mentioned. Um, I do think AM is very quite you know quite strong on the inside, um, against Texas. Um, so yeah, I, I just want to know what you think about this matchup. And then you think the winner of this matchup will go and beat either Iowa state or Xavier and go pretty far. Cause I, I think whoever wins this will go to elite eight in my opinion. Yeah, I think you're right. I think, yeah, whoever comes out of this matchup, Iowa state and Xavier, you know, they're, they're solid teams, but yeah, I think the real cream of the, of the crop, at least of this bottom part of the, of the Midwest is in this game right here. Um, I just think, you know, Texas to me, the Big 12, I think, was, I mean, hands down was the best conference in the country all season. Um, and to get through the Big 12, you've got to play a bunch of different ways. You've got to be balanced. You've got to, you know, some, sometimes you're going to go up and down the court. You're going to play a game with, you know, 75, 80 possessions. Other times you're going to have to slow it down and grind it through. I think Texas is prepared for anything. Um, whereas Texas A&M, if you kind of get them off of their game plan, they're not as good. So, yeah, I would, I would go with the Longhorns there. Gotcha. What do you think about that Xavier versus Iowa State matchup or Mississippi State? I guess it depends if you think yeah. Mississippi State wins. Yeah, it's true. I bet honestly, I I would say even if Mississippi State gets through here, I would I would pick that team or Iowa State over Xavier. Just like we we're talking about the Fremantle injury, um, Xavier's a good team, but they're not a great team, and they're you know, I think I think Iowa State especially. I mean, they just take away your first and your second option offensively. Are you know when when they play defense, I should say, um, Otzelberger, the head coach there, has just done a tremendous job. So, I, I ultimately I don't see how Xavier can score um, against Iowa State, and I think Iowa State gets a gets enough baskets where they where they prevail here. Gotcha. All right, so I got. All right. Um, all right, let's talk about Houston. Um, and whether you are a believer. Um, and Houston over, let's see, Auburn, and then maybe potentially Indiana or Drake in the next matchup. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I, I think Houston. I mean, it's tricky. I last year, you know, they they had a very very good team. Were kind of underseated on the five line. Made I think to the Elite Eight. Had a surprising win over Arizona, and then ultimately fell in the Elite Eight to to Villanova. Um, it really, again, the question with, with Houston is health. And is Marcus Sasser going to be healthy? Is he going to be 100%? Because if he is, this is a fantastic team uh, that's capable of, of winning six games in March and winning the whole thing. Um, so I, I do think they get through Auburn, even with that question mark kind of lingering over this matchup. How much further they get is an open question. Um, but yeah, I mean, they're, they do everything well. Um, and I think Auburn, you know, ultimately is just, a little weak in a few areas where Houston can exploit that. How about Indiana with Trace and uh, Trace Jackson Davis? You think he will pose any problem against Houston, assuming that they go uh, get over Drake in the matchup? Whew. Yeah, I mean, this would be 
that would be a heavyweight heavyweight fight for sure. Um, I, I do like the way Indiana's played. Um, they've had a lot of expectations this year, and they've largely lived up to them. Beaten Purdue twice, which is you know no small feat. Um, they challenge themselves in the non-conference. I don't know. I think again, you could go either way here. Um, I think back last year to you know the way Houston was able to deal with uh, Illinois and, mm-hmm. and Kofi Coburn kind of shut him down. Even though Houston's <laughs> a little undersized, yeah. I mean they're just they just swarm to the ball. Um, and yeah. they have depth, they have talent, they have experience. So if, if it is, you know, Indiana there in this spot, and that's also an open question, I think Drake, that could be a very close one. Um, okay. But yeah, whoever gets to that point, I think Houston probably still beats them. But okay. So between Drake and Indiana, I think oh, I'm yeah, going to yeah. go with Indiana. Um, and then you yeah. say Houston, right? So mm-hmm. let's go Houston. And I know who you got between Texas and Iowa State, but, you know, <laughs> I'll let you make the pick. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, these, they, they, they played in the regular season. Um, I think they split the matchups, Texas. Mm -hmm. Again, I I think it's just the balance. Um, and you look kind of across the board and sort of the trends of the champions teams that are able to win six games and and cut down the nets. Right. You have to have some balance. Iowa state, great defense. Their offense is is just kind of non-existent. And I I think that's ultimately going to do them in, in the sweet 16. Yeah, and that and that's why I picked Texas A and M over Penn State. Um, mm-hmm. Even if Penn State wins that matchup, I just don't think Penn State will go far, because you know they like to shoot threes, and I think they just need to have a little more balance. And teams like that, not just Penn State, but teams like that, like you said, I mean, need to have a balance not only on offense and defense, but also on the offensive side. You know, threes versus in, inside versus outside. You know, there will be a lot of matchup nightmares you know for each of these uh teams you know they have strengths and weaknesses so i think the more diversified your offensive scheme and defensive schemes are i think it will help them only help them going far in the tournament yeah so i think ultimately it it came down to number one and number two seed so yeah. it's kind of kind of boring <laughs> but hopefully in other regions we get it gets a little more exciting but you know you think houston's gonna win or texas is gonna win to that uh, in that matchup coming out of the region so here I, I have Texas edging Houston. Um, I think it would be close. I think a couple of Texas teams playing. I think the Midwestern final would be in Kansas City. So you get a lot of representation from both from both fan bases. It'd be an electric atmosphere. Um, but yeah, I, I think, you know, Houston, they just haven't really played anybody. And, and I think mm-hmm. at some point, yeah, you know, unless you're Gonzaga who really goes out of their way to schedule the non-conference. And also the West Coast Conference has gotten a lot better. Um, but the American this year was pretty bad. Mm-hmm. I mean, Houston, they, they played, I think they played Virginia, they played Alabama, they played <laughs> Memphis three times and that's it. Um, and they won a couple times of those, you know, I think they went three and two in those five games. And so I think they're good. They're not battle tested in the way the teams from the big 12 are. And the last two champions were from the big 12. Um, I think that that league prepares you so well for these games. Um, so yeah, I think Texas probably has the edge there. Gotcha. I like that pick. I like that pick. Um, all right, let's go over to the South region, um, where I think um, things are a little more straightforward, in my opinion, at least. Um, yeah. But let's talk about Alabama as the number one seed, and then Arizona as the number two seed. What do you think about those teams uh, and their chances go- of making it to the Elite Eight? So, yeah, I, I would say Alabama, I would pencil them through. Um, I mean, they they have it all. They have kind of the recipe for a very successful postseason run. They have an elite defense. You know, their offense gets a lot of a lot of the attention because they play fast. They score a lot of points. Um, they play kind of a fun style. Brandon Miller is going to be a lottery pick, probably a top five pick. Um, yeah. You know, he's still playing. Um, you know, he's kind of playing through. Uh, yeah, it, to put it mildly. Um, some some pretty awful circumstances there um, mm-hmm. on that on that ball team, but yeah, he's you know they, they've given him the green light to keep playing, and and he's done a good job. Um, you know, leading that team to, to the number one overall seed. So you know. Alabama is formidable, um, but yeah, they they play a unique style too, which is interesting. Nate Oates kind of has them. They play fast. They kind of money ball it um, with mm-hmm. the way they play. So they're going to be a tough out for anybody. Gotcha. What do you think about Arizona's chance of being upset by an Ivy League team in Princeton? Ooh, well, you know, I mean, Princeton, they the Ivy League every year, you know, Right. Think, thinking back to a few years, Harvard made a <laughs> Harvard. run, you know, yeah. Yale's, Yale's had some really solid teams. Um, Cornell, I think you never know. Um, Arizona, 
the thing that that you can't you don't really get much of in the Ivy League is is two two seven footers, you know, lining up um, <laughs> in and I think Balo and Tubelis. Yes. So Arizona just kind of like last year. I mean, they're huge. Um, and I think I don't think they're quite as good as last year. I mean, mm-hmm. losing Benedict Mathern to the NBA obviously hurts hurts your roster, but but they might be playing better now than they were last year, if that makes any sense. So I mm-hmm. I like them in this matchup, um, and I probably like them in the next one too. Gotcha. Yeah. You know, I was looking at Princeton a little you know, more carefully than, than I would would have um, just because, you know, there is a 15 seed uh, that usually makes a pretty good run in a tournament like this every few years. And, you know, there's always that team that's a Cinderella story, right? Like in the tournament like this. And I thought about picking Princeton pretty to go pretty far, but and man, as soon as I saw those two uh, big men for Arizona <laughs> um, highlights and everything, I just feel like Arizona has what it takes to even be able to maybe beat Alabama in the Elite Eight game. But, um, but yeah, let's talk about um, Maryland versus West yeah. Virginia. Um, and then maybe the potential upset by College of Charleston that I've seen a lot, mm-hmm. a lot of people pick, I think, over San Diego State. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, should we start at the 8-9? Um, yeah. You know, Maryland, I mean, I kind of like their team. The computers really like Maryland. Computers think Maryland's a top-20 team. That being said, they've only won on the road twice this year against Louisville, who, who you know is, is just total garbage this year, um, and, and Minnesota, who's also pretty bad. They haven't beaten any even remotely decent team away from home, really. Um, they have a couple neutral court wins, but, you know, road games, um, you know, the, the, those kind of early season neutral court, you know, those environments often are, are pretty, pretty dead. Um, mm-hmm. Tournament's a different animal. When, when you take Maryland away from their home court, they get a lot worse. Uh, so I have, I have West Virginia going through here. I love it. I love it. Um, and then what do you think about College of Charleston? You know, Charleston, I mean, this is another 512 that I, I really like. I, I think it's, it's not, I'm not surprised to hear a lot of people pick against San Diego State. San Diego State's a solid team, but they play really slow. They don't really have the firepower to run away from you once they take the lead. Mm. They don't really beat teams by very much. Um, and yeah, I, I think Charleston, they play a style that San Diego State is not really going to be able to handle. They play fast. They shoot a lot of threes, kind of like Alabama. Mm. Um, and I like Charleston. Yeah, I remember that one year, I think, Andrew Goodlock, um, who played for College of Charleston. Yeah, it's a long mm-hmm. time ago, but man, man, I mean, I remember. <laughs> yeah, it's a throwback for sure. And College of Charleston, you know, they're, they're you know, a regular in, in a bracket like this. And, yeah. you know, I think they're usually around the seed all the time, um, like number 11, number 13 and stuff like that. So, yeah, I think that's a good pick. Um, what do you think about Virginia against Furman? You know, UVA tends to struggle quite a bit in tournaments like this. I wonder what your thoughts are on, on that matchup. Yeah, this one I think is going to be really close. I mean, usually you think a four versus a 13, it should be a pretty comfortable win for the four seed. Um, but Virginia is just not that good. Um, they have the mm-hmm. resume of a four seed. They, they have a lot of really good neutral court early season wins. Um, so they, I get why they're here, but, you know, yeah, I mean, we've seen them get upset by, <laughs> you know, by a 16 um before and and I just don't think that they really have the NBA level talent that um that 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 this team has had in the past where they've made deeper runs. I don't know. I, I think it's close. I mean, I still think Virginia's probably a little better, but mm-hmm. if you want to pick Furman, I mean I think this is a good opportunity to call an upset. Um I think it'll be close. I think it will be close. And I think that, you know, they got that really real bad loss already out of their system yeah. this year yeah. <laughs> against Boston College. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think they will be a little more motivated here. Um, I don't think was, this will be a trap um, game where UVA tends to struggle. So I have UVA advancing. And then the next next two matchups is interesting to me. Um, NC State, um, who has been a very like mysterious team for to me at least um, this season in the ACC yeah. um, against Creighton. And then we have Baylor, um, you know, former national championship team against uh, Santa Barbara. I'm here. I know, Tony, you're located yeah. out in California. Yeah. Um, I was wondering what your thoughts are on this match, on these matchups, and if they have any chance to maybe down the road against Arizona. Yeah, so I think, I mean, here's, 
the, the Baylor Santa Barbara matchup is interesting. Um, you know, Baylor, they two years removed from a national title. They still have a lot of those same players on their roster. Um, they have three outstanding guards, Keontae George, Adam Flagler, LJ Cryer. Um, you know, they can all shoot the three. They can all handle the basketball. They often all play together at the same time. Um, they kind of have this sort of three guard lineup that they like to run out with a, with a couple of shot blockers and wings um, kind of filling out the rest of the, of the rotation. Uh, but so their offense is great. Their defense is really not good. Um, and that sort of, it's sort of a, they're kind of a boomer bust team. Um, they can, they can beat you, uh, you know, by just shooting threes, by getting to the foul line, by turning you over. Um, but if they have a cold shooting night, then, you know, a team and Santa Barbara is not bad. I mean, they're, there are, I think, around a hundredth in Ken Palm, which for a 14 seed is, is pretty decent. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, I, I think it's just a matter of, do you roll the dice with Baylor? Um, I think they could go to the final four. I think they could lose in this one. Um, I <laughs> probably think they have a bit too much firepower for Santa Barbara, but yeah, they're an gotcha. interesting team. Yeah. I'll go with Baylor. And then do you have NC state upsetting Creighton here um, in the 11, six matchup, or you have Creighton? You know, Creighton's again, it's, they have very good defense. Their offense has not been as good as people have expected it to be this year. Um, and they're not playing well lately. They got blown out in the Big East tournament um, in their last game, I think, against Xavier. They just didn't show up to that game at all. Lost by lost by 20, could have lost by 30. Huh. Um, NC State, you know, I mean, they, they have a couple nice wins. The ACC is like a hard conference yeah. to judge this year. Right. Um, UNC didn't even make it. You know, uh, Clemson barely missed out. Virginia Tech had kind of a, kind of a lousy year. Um, mm-hmm. So I don't know. I, I would honestly think, you know, the more I'm thinking about it, I kind of like NC State, even though the computers probably favor Creighton. There's always an 11-6 upset. And I just think for whatever reason, it hasn't clicked for Creighton this year. They lost six games in a row early in the season. You don't usually lose six in a row and still make the tournament, let alone get a six seed. But yeah, I, I kind of I think that they're just, the pieces aren't all there for that team. Gotcha. So I got NC State advancing. Um, yeah. So Tony is very brave going against going against the machines and computers <laughs> in the year of chat G2P. Uh, so it's true. Someone's got to do it. <laughs> Someone's got to stand up to the technology going up against AI. So it's interesting. Um, Missouri versus Utah State. Um, that's an interesting one. I just have no idea about either team. So I would love your opinions on that. Yeah, I think this is Missouri is another interesting team where um they've beaten a lot of good teams they they have a lot of nice wins in the conference um they have a fantastic offense they have a terrible defense <laughs> um one of the worst defenses of anyone in the whole tournament and that's not it's even including the 15s and the 16 seeds missouri's defense is way down there which is definitely a red flag they're kind of similar to iowa in that regard explosive offense they don't mm-hmm. play any defense um but that said, you know, Mountain West teams really struggled last season in the tournament. I think they went 0-4. Um, you know, even the higher seeds, Michigan beat Colorado State in the first round. Um, you know, I just don't trust Mountain West teams. It's simple as that. It's I wish I kind of had a better explanation for you, but I think Missouri from the SEC, I think they're just I think they're just better. Yeah. No, I get it. I get it. And that's that's the basis why we picked Texas over Houston, because Houston True. didn't really play anybody in that American conference. Um all right, so we got Alabama, let's see, advancing to Sweet 16 over West Virginia. Let's talk about <laughs> Virginia <laughs> versus College of Charleston. Maybe, yeah, I mean, maybe it kind of sets up, really, for College of Charleston to be able to make a far run here um, yeah. in the tournament, um, just given how, you know, Virginia can struggle at times. Um, so what do you think about that 12-4 matchup? Yeah, I, I would say let's let's put Charleston through. I mean, Virginia, their defense is not as good as it, it generally is. If you talk about right. the pedigree of kind of what they've been able to accomplish, it's kind of below par. Um, and Charleston loves to run. They have a good offense. So, yeah, I, I put them through. All right. I, this is an interesting one. I have Baylor beating NC State. Um, mm-hmm. But like you said, I mean, ACC has been just up and down um, quite a bit here. So I like the more consistent Baylor. But what do you think about that matchup? Yeah, I think, I think I agree with you. Um, I think in March, you know, guard play is, is King. Um, and Baylor mm-hmm. has the best trio of anyone in the country. NC state. Yeah. Had a, had a good season and who knows, we could, we could all be wrong. We could be undervaluing the ACC. It's happened before. Um, but yeah, I, I like Baylor. 
So the best guards versus best forwards, in my opinion, in Arizona. Yep. Um, so that's an interesting two v three matchup. Um, whoever wins that, I think will probably lose to Alabama anyway in the next round. But um, what do you think about that two v three matchup? Ooh, yeah. I mean, this is this is an interesting one. Um, I am tempted to pick Baylor, even though I said you know they have great offense, kind of a little bit of a suspect defense. However, I got two, two things for you. So Baylor beat Gonzaga on a neutral court earlier this season. I think Gonzaga is a little similar to Arizona in sort of mm -hmm. the style. Um, so I don't think that Baylor is going to be overwhelmed by that size, by the fact that they have some dominant back-to-the-basket big men. Um, and then, you know, I, I also think UCLA kind of showed a blueprint for how to defend Arizona um, in the Pac-12 championship game. Even though UCLA lost that game, they played really small. Um, and they just kind of harassed Arizona's big men and it worked. And I, I think Baylor could, could try that same approach here. Probably not do it quite as well, but I think they, they might do enough to get through. Yeah, that's a very good point against um, Gonzaga. The win against Gonzaga that you talked about for Baylor. I think that's a similar matchup, like you said, against Arizona. I do think Baylor will do will match up well against against the Arizona team. I do have Baylor advancing, but do you agree with me that Alabama is going to beat them? Yeah. Yeah. I think, okay. you know, at a certain point, Alabama is just, they do everything better. <laughs> um, and they have Brandon Miller who just, who, yeah, I mean, he, he can drop 40 on you, no problem. Um, so yeah, I think we have Alabama going through to the final four here. All right. So we, so far we have Alabama coming out of the South region and then um, Texas coming out of the Midwest region. So we have a number one and number two seed um, in the final four. Um, so which is, you know, it's, it's yeah. okay. So it'll be interesting to hear about what you think about the, the rest of the regions here in the East region, where um, for those of you who may not know this, but um, I live in Lexington, Kentucky and UK, University of Kentucky, almost did not make it to the tournament this year, but <laughs> They got hot at the right time, um, and then they kind of went south again, losing to Vanderbilt, but that's an interesting one. Um, but yeah, I think the number one seed in this region, though, Purdue, is a very, very strong team. Um, I know Big Ten um, has been up and down as well as a conference, but Purdue has been a very solid force, um, having been number one on the rankings um, for several weeks. Um throughout the season, but what do you think about Purdue's chance getting out of this region? Yeah, so I, I would say Purdue, they'll beat Texas Southern or Fairleigh Dickinson. That's not going to be close. I think they could beat them by 50. Um, Purdue, they started the season really hot. I mean, they beat Marquette, who's a two seed. West Virginia, who's a very good, I think, nine seed, um, eight or nine seed. Gonzaga and Duke, all in a row, all in sort of this the kind of mid to late November time stretch so they kind of planted the flag early in the season as we are the best team in the country come and get us um mm -hmm. they have zach Eady, seven foot four um you know player of the year he's he's a monster um but then kind of towards the, the once the big 10 season got underway they started to wobble a little bit um and i honestly i i, I mean they're a good team they're one seed don't get me wrong but yeah as as we Maybe I'll save it as we get further into this bracket, but I would not be surprised Ooh. to see them lose a little early. Oh, okay. I love it. I love it. A little foreshadowing here. Um, all right. We got Memphis versus FAU. Um, I don't really know much about these two teams, so I would love your opinion on that and if they have any chance against Purdue in the second round. Yeah, so I think Memphis, they're an interesting team. Um, they were a very young team last year, uh, Jalen Duran, Amani Bates, and then you think back a couple mm -hmm. of years earlier than that, Precious Achua. Yeah. You know, Penny Hardaway is known for bringing in these, these star-studded recruiting classes, playing freshmen, playing sophomores. This season, Memphis has 10 seniors on their roster. Their whole wow. team is senior. They're the oldest, one of the oldest teams in the country. Um, so they're kind of steady. And that's sort of – maybe they didn't get as much hype throughout the season is because they don't have the superstars that are going to get drafted in the first round. Mm -hmm. Um but by the end of the year, you know, they, they played really, played Houston really tough three times. And then they, they kind of blew them out um, this past Sunday to win the American conference. Right. So yeah, I've, I've Memphis going through Florida Atlantic's a decent team. Um, but I think Memphis is just too strong overall. Oh, I, I like that. You 
Paul Kiley of Memphis. That's that's very interesting because I didn't really watch much of American there um, this year. So that's an interesting one, I think, in the next matchup against Purdue. But we'll save that um, okay. in a few minutes for a few minutes. Um, and then we have Duke out of ACC against Oral Roberts. And we have Tennessee against Louisiana. And I think most people will go with Duke and Tennessee just given the brand re- recognition, mm-hmm. big school names. But do you see any upset potential here between the 12 seed and five, 12 and five and 13 and four? Yeah. So this is another one where I think this is the best 12 seed in the tournament in Oral Roberts, but this is also the best five seed with Duke. <laughs> um, so it's kind of, it's unfortunate where I don't think we're going to see a 12 five here just okay. because Duke has really figured it out. Um, and this happens, you know, we'll see it with Kentucky a lot too. Young teams, a lot of freshmen. Yeah. They kind of don't really do well. And then, by the time February, March rolls around, they just they just rock it to the moon. So I, I think Duke is playing really well right now. Gotcha. What about Tennessee versus Louisiana? Tennessee's – this one I would almost say maybe Louisiana. I'm still going to go with Tennessee, mm-hmm. but their starting point guard got hurt a couple weeks ago. They haven't really been the same team since then. Um, their defense is very good, but it's fallen off. Their offense, strangely enough, has actually gotten a little bit better, but – Tennessee is known for their defense. That's what brought them throughout the season. Um, they're number one, I think, in the country, or number two at, at one point, and they've kind of since taken a bit of a step back. So I have them getting through Louisiana, but yeah, that's probably as far as I see them going, to be honest. Yeah, I think I read somewhere that Duke won nine straight games heading into this tournament. So, you know, like you said, they are on a hot streak. Now, UK, on the other hand, um, I think having lost to Vanderbilt um, <laughs> very <laughs> recently, that's an interesting one, I think. Um, I think UK also lost to Vanderbilt in a football game, so I think there's something there. But um, <laughs> oh, So no. anyway, as a number six seed, I think it's an interesting matchup. Like you said, UK can be streaky, uh, both up and down, um, going up against the Providence team. What do you think about this matchup? Yeah, I, you know, I think, I mean, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of Kentucky, um, but I think that might be partly because I just expected them to be really, really good. And, and they've, they've just been solid, but they haven't quite hit the ceiling that I was expecting. And who knows, there's still time. We've seen Calipari do it before. He's taken, I think, an eight seed all the way to the, to the, to the final game. Um, they still have a lot of the pieces in place from last year's two seed, but, you know, we all know what happened there. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think Kentucky gets through. I'm not impressed by Providence. If this were another 11 seed, I may, maybe I'd pick the upset here, but not in this case. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, having Oscar Shibway returning for UK, I had higher expectations as well. Um, but their offense looks very limited. Um, I think they just move the ball around and then just jacking up these crazy shots um, unless they go to Shibway down low. But I think matchup-wise, I think I like UK here against Providence. Kansas State against Montana State. What do you think about this matchup? I think this is not going to be close. I, I don't think Montana State can score against Kansas State. Just plain and simple. You know, they're, uh-huh. they don't have the offensive tools to do it. So naturally, Montana State's going to win by 30 points. <laughs> um, and... They're going to score 90. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. That's how it works, um, as, as evidenced by our last year's video. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I have Kansas State winning here as well. Uh, Michigan State versus USC. I mean, two you know well-known schools um, and programs. Um, as an interesting matchup. What do you think about Michigan State's chance of beating USC as the seventh seed? Yeah, it's a cool matchup. It's a future Big Ten matchup, isn't it? Two years. This is going to be. Oh, gosh. This is going to be a Big Ten game in the you know late night in February or January. Yeah. But for now, um, you know, Michigan State's a funny team. They shoot the ball really well. They're a great three-point shooting team. Um, but their defense has just fallen off a cliff. And I think it's just because they don't have any big men. Um, I mean, they're, they're relying on Joey Hauser to kind of play center or, um, you know, they have a couple other guys that kind of throw in there, but they're not very good. Um, so I don't know. I, I think I could go either way. I think it's going to be a pretty close game, pretty entertaining game, actually. But in the end, I, I think USC probably gets through, which, you know, again, easy, easy for us to say that, you know, as, as Michigan alums, but I, I don't trust Michigan State. They lost to, to Ohio State, who's really not very good in the Big Ten tournament. Um, so I would go with the Trojans here. All right. I love that pick. Um, <laughs> I thought you uh, 
Yeah, yeah. Um, Marquette as the number two seed. What do you think? I mean, I think they should go through, right, against Vermont. Yeah, yeah. Vermont, they're they're kind of a feisty fifteen, but yeah, Marquette's playing really well. Gotcha. So speaking of Marquette, I have Marquette beating USC, but I think this is a tougher matchup than most people think. Um, I mean, major conference, USC battle tested. Yeah. Um against UCLA, having played them twice. I, I like Marquette here, but what do you think about USC's chances here against Marquette? Yeah, I think I think this is going to be a good one. Um, I mean, a few years ago, uh, Andy Enfield took USC, I think, all the way to the Elite Eight. So he's had success in the tournament before as, as, as a seed where he wouldn't otherwise expect it. Um, but I think Marquette, they got a guy, Tyler Kolek, who's, I think, a second or third team All-American point guard. Um, he's the real deal. He's He's really good. And he's, especially in the last two months, when Big East play started really rolling through, he's been tremendous. Um, almost kind of reminds me of another, you know, Michigan State guy from a few years ago, Cassius Winston, um, mm. who was just, who tormented Michigan, was an outstanding point guard. I think Tyler Cole kind of reminds me a little bit of him. So I would, I would say Marquette, on the strength of his play, gets through here. Gotcha, yeah. The guard play is very important in the tournament. Um what do you think about UK versus Kansas State? I think that's an interesting one. Yeah, that's that's a tough one. Um, but I, I I hear what you said about earlier Kansas State. Um, that you you I think you speak very highly of Kansas State. So yeah. I, I like Kansas State here, but you know I, I think as UK, you know, if they hit, you know, on their cylinders, you know, in the tournament. Mm-hmm. After winning that matchup against Providence, maybe they go on a streak. But, you know, I like Kansas State still. What do you think? Yeah, I, I would go Kansas State in a close one. Um, they, Kansas State turns it over quite a bit. They're, they don't really take care of the basketball. So I think that's the one thing to watch out for. Um, but there's a matchup, point guard matchup. Kansas State's point guard, um, Marquise Noel versus Kentucky's um, kind of a longer, lengthier guard in Carson Wallace. That's going to be a fantastic game. Um, and it's really going to come down to that matchup. Um, and ultimately, I think Kansas State, they've proven it. I mean, they, they put up, I think, 110 points on Texas earlier this season, which is crazy. Um, so I, I think they'll figure it out, but I think it'll be close. Gotcha. All right. And then we have um, a Duke versus Tennessee matchup, 5v4. Um, I think this can go either way. Um, but like you said, Duke's on a hot streak. Um, will they continue in this matchup? I think they will. I think Duke wins it. Um, yeah, they're playing really well. Tennessee's a little banged up. And I think Duke's, their offense, they're figuring it out under the first-year head coach, replacing Coach K. And I think they get they get through the Sweet 16. On the other side of that, uh, Sweet 16 potential matchup here, um, between Purdue and Memphis. I know you kind of talked about maybe <laughs> foreshadowed here um, about Purdue getting upset, but are they going to get upset here against Memphis or maybe in the later matchup? What do you think of, uh, about Memphis's chance of beating Purdue, the number one seed? I think this is where they go down. I think Purdue loses to Memphis. Um, of course, Zach Eady for Purdue is incredible, but really everyone else on, on, on Purdue's roster that's at least playing around Zach Eady, it's getting him the ball. They're freshmen um, or their wing players don't really handle the ball, but Purdue struggles. Um, and it's, it's, I think it's tough to play two true freshman guards and make a huge run unless they're lottery picks, you know, and then, unless you've got guys that are going to be drafted in the top 10, but that's not the case for Purdue. Um, and you're going against a team full of seniors who just, who just handled Houston pretty easily. Um, honestly, should have beat them twice um, in the last two weeks. So I, I think, I think Memphis, this is going to be the first big shock where the number one seed goes down early, but I think Memphis doesn't. So I know we haven't talked about Kansas, the last number one seed, but do you think, so do you think Purdue is the weakest number one seed in the tournament? I think so. I think so. Um, I mean, Purdue, I don't know. I, I, I feel like they've played in a lot of close games in the Big Ten. They've won a lot of them, um, but they just haven't really hit the hit their stride in the way that I was expecting them from their early season performance where they looked incredible. Um, I think Zach Eady is great and he's going to score 25 or 30 points pretty much every game. He's going to be a problem. Um, but I think, you know, it's a real thing. Freshmen playing in their first full season, you kind of hit a bit of a wall, um, whether it's conditioning, whether it's mental toughness, whether it's the travel, whatever else. Um, so I think the play around Zach Eady has dropped a little bit. Um, and I think, I think they're pretty vulnerable because of that. 
Yeah, and unfortunately, I do think they land the toughest, the the best number eight seed in the tournament in Memphis. I think so. Yeah, um, I think that's a matchup thing as well. Um, so what do you think about Memphis versus Duke? This is an interesting one, but I'm guessing you are still riding on Duke's hot streak. Yeah, I think we're gonna put. I I think Duke gets through here. Um, I I mean, what the way they've been playing has really impressed me. Um. Went 2-0 against North Carolina. And I know North Carolina didn't even make the tournament, but to beat them in the last game of the season in Chapel Hill, um, when North Carolina needed that game to make the tournament, basically, um, mm-hmm. that was like a game seven for them. And the fact that they handled them um, and then kept the run going, it's really impressive. And I, I, I think I think they're, they're big. They have lottery picks. They have the talent. And they're peaking at the right time. Gotcha. Yeah, we're... We Michigan fans are familiar with that, um, so <laughs> we understand. And um, Kansas State versus Marquette, um, two teams that I don't really know much about, but I heard you talk highly of Kansas State. Um, but Marquette is no joke, I from what I hear as well. So what do you think about this matchup? Yeah, I mean, Marquette's another team that's been really hot. They won the Big East regular season championship, and then they won the conference tournament championship. Um, Shaka Smart has disappointed in March before. So I will preface this yeah. by saying that, you know, I won't, I won't hold this, hold this against you. If you get a little anxious about me putting Marquette this far. Um, but I don't think he's ever had a guard as good as, as Tyler Kolek, at least recently, um, you know, Texas, you know, they, they had solid teams, but, but never this good. Um, so I think, and again, Kansas state, they just, they just turn the ball over a lot. Um, they're a little sloppy with it. They play fast and loose. I think that's enough against Kentucky, but I, I don't think that's enough to beat Marquette. Gotcha. So who gets out of this region between Duke and Marquette? What do you, what's your pick? Oh, man. I mean, I I kind of want to pick Duke, but in the end, I think Marquette does it. Um, I just, I don't know. I, I It's going to be a close one. Um, but ultimately, you know, Duke – They've been on a run. They've they've been doing really well. Um, but they <clears throat> they're kind of a they're, they're a team that's oriented around the big guys, um, lively and Filipowski. Roach, the guard, is is solid. Um, but again, I, I don't think that they can handle the way that Marquette spaces the floor. Um, they have a great ball screen game. So I think Marquette gets to the final four here. So I should put all my money on Tyler Kolek um to hit over over the points total. I mean, each of those matchups, right? I, I think I do think yeah. he's gonna create a lot of matchup yeah. problems, um, and I do think I think he won the Big East Player of the Year award, um, so that's mm-hmm. gonna be a player he's to good. watch. Yeah, he's so good. I think you know, for those of you who are interested in those kind of bets, um, I think Marquette making the far run like this in the bracket, um, you know, I think that he has a pretty good chance of performing well. Um, in the West region, though, um, we have Kansas, number one seed, and UCLA as the number two seed. But then we have number three, Gonzaga. So that's a very tough one through three yeah. seeds in the West region. What do you think about Kansas's chance of getting out of this region? Yeah, this is a really good region. I mean, Kansas is good, but UConn is also good as a four seed. St. Mary's is another kind of computer darling as a five seed. Um so this is tough. I, I think Kansas, honestly, I think they got a little bit hard done by on this draw. I think, yeah, they'll beat Howard. Um, but yeah, the fact they have to go out to Vegas, um, you know, they have to travel across the country instead of staying in the Midwest, which would be their backyard or the South um, is tough. So yeah, I think Kansas gets through that one. Um, and the next matchup, yeah, I, I have Arkansas. Um, Illinois is just there. They have two really great wins. I think they, I think they, they beat UCLA early in the season. Um, mm-hmm. And then, yeah, they, they beat Texas as well, you know, but they haven't done anything since. I don't think they have a single, you know, good win really after beyond those two. Um, their best three players on Illinois team are all transfers. So I, I just think that there's kind of a team chemistry issue there with Illinois. Um, mm-hmm. They're just, they're just less than the sum of their parts, if that makes any sense. So I think, I think Arkansas gets through. Gotcha. All right, we have St. Mary's versus VCU. Um, we've seen St. Mary's make, you know, um, a good run in tournaments like this. But what do you think about their matchup against VCU? And then what do you think about UConn's matchup against Iowa, I, Iona? 
Yeah, and this one, um, you know, I guess I'm leaning towards chalk in both of these. Um, I think, especially the Yukon Iona game, that's being played, I think, up in Albany. So it's super close to Iona, super close to Yukon. I think we're everybody in that in that arena is going to be rooting for Yukon or Iona. No one's <laughs> going to care about St. Mary's or VCU. So that's going to be kind of a weird environment, I think. Um, but yeah, I, I like VCU. I think they, they've got a couple of Michigan transfers who you know are doing a solid job there, but. But St. Mary's is just too disciplined. They're too good of an offensive team. They execute really well. VCU kind of – the only way they win is by causing turnovers and, and causing problems, and St. Mary's just doesn't make those mistakes. So I think they get through. Gotcha. The Havoc-style defense that VCU is well-known for. True. They still um, kept it. Yeah, even Shaka Smart departure didn't affect that. Um, TCU versus uh, the winner of ASU versus Nevada. Um that's going to be an interesting one, but I have TCU advancing. What do you think? Yeah, I like TCU as well. Um, Arizona State, you know, they, they, they have a few big wins. They beat Arizona on a miracle, you know, half-court shot. But that's kind of what it takes for Arizona State to beat a good team is for it to be kind of a miracle. Um, in Nevada, yeah, I don't really see it. I, I think they barely snuck into the field. Um, but I wouldn't be concerned about either of those teams against TCU. But then TCU, I guess their point is moot because Gonzaga is playing against Grand Canyon. Um, that's going to be an interesting one. And then we have Northwestern. I'm sorry. Hey, here's Palmer. <laughs> oh, oh, hello. Yes. All right, Palmer we have getting Gonzaga. excited for the uh, for the tournament. I'm, I'm yeah, assuming. he is. He is. We have Gonzaga okay. against Grand Canyon, and then yeah, we have Northwestern, Boise State, and UCLA. But I just feel like Gonzaga is too strong for against Grand Canyon. What do you think about that matchup? Yeah, I, I think Gonzaga kind of rolls over them. Yeah. Um, shouldn't be too much of a problem. Um, but yeah, then Northwestern Boise State's interesting. Um, those are kind of similar teams, honestly. They are, I think, both kind of defense first uh, ball clubs in the way that they approach the game. Um, Northwestern's had a great run. They've beaten a lot of really good teams this year. But um yeah, I would I would say Northwestern narrowly edges uh, Boise State there. Oh, a Big Ten team right there, and then I'm guessing you have UCLA beating UNC Asheville. Yes, yeah, UCLA okay. will get through. So we actually have one through eight <laughs> all wow. advancing, no single upset in this region. Region, um, so. That's an interesting one. I think some people have picked. I've seen VCU beating St. Mary's. But I like your analysis on St. Mary's just not playing into VCU strength. Um, so I think that's an interesting pick there. Um, so, yeah, what do you think about these one through eight matchups? Yeah, that's right. It was all chalk to this point. But I think, well, we can start at the top. Um, I think Kansas, you know, to continue the trend, I think they're the one seed. Um, Arkansas is a funny team in that they haven't really had their full team together all season. Um, Nick Smith, who's probably a, a top 10, top 15 NBA draft pick this, this mm. coming draft, has missed like two or three months throughout the course of the year. It's been really banged up. They also lost, Arkansas did, um, I think, a forward really early in the season to a knee injury. They're good, um, but Kansas defending champs, I think they get through. Gotcha. And do you think, do you, are you a believer in UConn over St. Mary's? I am. I think UConn, especially with this game being up in Albany, that's a tough, I mean, St. Mary's got to fly all the way from the Bay Area way out there. Um, yeah, I, I think this will be this will be one that UConn wins. Okay. I have a feeling this region is going to be very chalky. Um, so we have Gonzaga at number three <laughs> and UCLA at number two against Northwestern. Um, what do you think about those uh, number two and three seeds? So, yeah, I think – I think Gonzaga beats TCU, um, but I would I would I would pick Northwestern over UCLA. Um, oh. That's kind of a one where I think UCLA with with the injuries they've had, um, they aren't as good as as really the the numbers suggest that they are. And Northwestern, I mean, they they have a tremendous on ball perimeter defensive team. Um, Chase Adige and Boo Booey uh, at, at the guard position. They have a center also um, that does a really nice job. You know, they kind of funnel pressure towards him. He's got a good block rate. He's, he's really hung in there as a freshman, which is the reason why Northwestern is this good. It's because their defense. Um, but yeah, I think Chase Adige against Jaime Jaquez is one of the matchups of the tournament. And I think Northwestern, it's going to be a slow, physical, kind of grinded out style game. 
Um, but Northwestern is comfortable playing that way. Um, and UCLA, I don't think, ultimately has the weapons um, without without Jalen Clark to get through them. Yeah, and I believe, I think, Adam Bona, the big man, um, was mm, injured as well. Um, but I think he's coming back, supposedly, to the tournament. So we'll see how those injuries affect UCLA's, uh, UCLA's chances. Um, so, yeah, we have Gonzaga against Northwestern. So do you are you a believer in Northwestern to make it to the, the I guess, Elite Eight and Final Four? Oh, that would be that would be a story. I kind of think they're <laughs> run-ins here. Um, I think Gonzaga prevails. They just, yeah, their offensive execution. Number one offense in the country. I think even Northwestern can't slow them down. Gotcha. And then we have Kansas against UConn. That's an interesting one. Um, I think UConn is a very good team, like you said, um, going up against the number one seed in Kansas. What do you think about this matchup? And you think this the winner of this matchup will be Gonzaga? So for this one, I think Kansas UConn is a close game, um, but ultimately, I, I think I think UConn's more balanced. Um, and recently, Kansas has been playing Jalen Wilson, who's a six eight, basically a small forward. He's been they, they, Bill Self has put him at the center position. Um, so they've been playing really, really small. They spread the court kind of five out style. Um, and I think we saw against Texas that just didn't work. UConn's also a, a big physical team. Uh, Sonogo, I think their center is really good. They get a ton of offensive rebounds. And I mm -hmm. think in this game, UConn just crushes them on the offensive boards. And I think they win. Oh, the number one seed goes down again. And so we have Gonzaga versus UConn. Oh, wow. Let's, do you think UConn will make it this far to the final four? Oh, yeah, this is, this is a, a really tough one. Um, I just like the way Gonzaga has been playing. I think they, they lost to St. Mary's. They lost to Loyola Marymount early in the season. And then when they played them again, they just totally blew them both out of the water. They beat Loyola Marymount by 45 points. They beat St. Mary's by 25 or 30. Um, so they've got an edge to them. I think a lot of times Gonzaga just will kind of skate through the season and they won't really face any adversity until the end. In this case, they lost a few games early on. I think that's helped them. So I think they're primed to make a big run. All right. So we have Gonzaga again coming out of the West region. Um, we have number one number one seed and two number two seeds, and then one number three seed in Tony's final four predictions. Um, yeah. So I think that's an interesting matchup here between Alabama versus Marquette and then Texas against Gonzaga. So what do you think about these final four matchups and who you got as the potential national champions in your bracket? Yeah. So in my bracket, yeah, this is the final four. I have Alabama getting through and Texas getting through. Um, I think Alabama's defense is just too in your face. Uh, it's, it's, you know, Marquette, even though I love their guard play, I think they've got it. They've had a fantastic season. Um, they have a good point guard, but they don't have a, a really an elite big guy. Um, and I think you need both um, in that case. So I, I would say, yeah, probably Alabama gets through here. And then Texas, um, they played in the regular season and Texas smoked them. Um, so that's, you know, kind of a good data point there, even though it was in Austin. Uh, I just think the way Texas is playing has been really fantastic. I've been really impressed with them. Um, they have a lot of balance. And then, yeah, as in, in a potential final, this would be a, a rematch of the football national championship, <laughs> I think from a few years ago, a couple of football schools making the national title. But yeah, I've got Texas. Um, I just think, you know, Alabama, again, um, they play this style that works in the SEC. It's gotten them very far, but they can be a little loose. That's the one downside of Alabama is they turn the ball over a lot. Um, I think Texas just, they don't really have any weaknesses. Um, they have experience, they have guard play, they have, they don't have a dominant big man, but they have a rotation. Um, and I think they're kind of like Kansas last year. They're just across the board. They're solid. And I, they're just really tough to beat. So I, I have, I have Texas getting, getting all the way. Wow. The number two seed winning at all in Texas Longhorns. Yeah. I think that's an interesting pick there. Um, just given how much talent that Alabama has, but who knows what's going to happen with Brandon Miller's situation. I mean, something could come up throughout the tournament and that would be an interesting, uh, you know, difference maker there. Um, in the tournament. Um, so there is some risk to that Alabama's team. 
but yeah, I agree. I mean, Texas is so balanced and so talented um, the way that they've been playing, like you said. Um, I think that's a great pick. So Tony's national champion pick <laughs> is Texas Longhorns for 2023 March Madness Tournament. I hope this video ages well, better than <laughs> last year's. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, we'll see. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll re revisit this in about four days and we'll see what yeah. happens. Yeah, we'll find out very quickly and very soon. <laughs> so anyway, so anyway, Tony, do you have any other last comments before we go off offline? You know, I, I would say, I mean, just enjoy the ride. Um, just like last year. I mean, you, you can do all the planning in the world. Um, and I think on paper, a lot of these matchups make sense, but who knows? That's, that's the magic, the magic of March. I know it's a cliche, but a lot of these games are going to be very close. Um, and like you said at the very top, it's a wide open, it's a wide open tournament. There aren't really the dominant teams that we typically see the, the Dukes, the Kansases, the North Carolinas, um, even Gonzaga this year is they're good, but they're not quite as good. So I think there are, 15, 20 teams. I wouldn't be surprised if they made the final game. Um, so we'll see. But I think it'll be fun. That sounds great. And uh, for those of you who are watching, I hope you guys, um, you know, your your college, your university, you know, does well in the tournament, whoever you support. And I, most importantly, I hope your bracket does well. And I hope you find these uh, this video uh, informative, hopefully. And hopefully this can make you some money um, in your pools. Otherwise, um, so long until last next year. Um, hopefully, you know we uh, have a good tournament um, here in March. Um, until then, I hope you enjoy the video. Um, if you like the video, please, please uh, smash the like button below. Um, it would mean a lot to both of us um, if you um, like the video and then also subscribe to our channel. Um, we produce videos about other um, fantasy sports including um, soccer, basketball, ba baseball, you know, coming pretty soon, you name it. So yeah, check those out and hit the like button below. Otherwise you can follow uh, Tony at T Basil, as you can see on his uh, screen right there. And then I am at DFS Chan. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a good night. Thanks, Tony. Thanks for All coming right. to the show. Oh, of course. Anytime, Johnny. Good luck, everybody. All right. Good luck.